The following is an Outdoor Channel original production. Quintessential beaver dam duck. <laughs> hey, shoot him, shoot him, shoot him, shoot him. <laughs> Ready, guys. Good boy. Drop. Very good. Ducks Unlimited, presented by Midway USA. The esteemed outdoorsman and author Nash Buckingham immortalized Beaver Dam Lake. This is a place where time is set still and the gray ducks drop from the heavens into the cypress swamps below. Welcome to DU TV. This week, join Ducks Unlimited Executive Vice President Don Young, President John Pope, and myself as we meet up with Mike Boyd and his son Lamar to hunt the famed waters of the original Beaver Dam Lake in Northwest Mississippi. Job one of any duck hunt is to, is to stoke the furnace, you know, so we met Mike at the Blue and White. I had a really good breakfast, I had eggs and bacon and grits and biscuits and coffee and the old traditional Blue and White breakfast. Blue and White restaurant in Tunica is a special place. It's been there for, for years. I think it was built in 1937. It has pretty much been the, the spot that most duck hunters begin their day in Tunica County. Nash and a lot of the old club members used to stop at the Blue and White and, and eat regularly. And, and uh, even today, we carry on that tradition. Beaver Dam Lake is located just south of Tunica, Mississippi, in the Mississippi Alluvial Valley. This region provides significant winter habitat for a variety of waterfowl, including millions of mallards and wood ducks. Mike lives about six miles south of Tunica. He's got a very nice dock. Step right off in. I mean, it's a gentleman's hunt. There's nothing stressful about Mike Boyd's hunting. Don, I feel like I've been here before. I read about it enough and all good waterfowl have dreamed about, about coming here. Yeah, that's just beautiful. It looks like what it's supposed to look like, too. We have a lot of good hunts on cloudy days, but if I've got to have a cloudy day, I'd really just as soon it be raining. It seems like the ducks work better. There was a major storm moving in. We knew that. They're not just piling in the decoys. <laughs> <laughs> Kill him. Shot. It's the Drake Gadwall, I think. Well done, Wade. Every year we put this president's hunt together. Uh, where we go out with Don Young, the executive vice president. Don is the day-to-day -day manager of Ducks Unlimited's business. And then John is the president. He is the volunteer president, and the office of the president rotates. It's good to be with them, both from the hunting end of it and also from the aspect of knowing how DU is operating and where we're going. we got a few of them stirred up. Yeah. Just to watch these guys, you know, they're very important in the business world. But you dress them up in camouflage. You put a shotgun in their hand and you put them out there in the blind. They're regular guys, you know. They're watching those birds work. They get anxious and they get nervous and they want to shoot well and, you know, then we share those old stories. So it's just fun. We're hunting today, boys. <laughs> Better kill him if you get a shot. Shoot him, John. Knock it down. Great. All right, two. Well, one of the great things about waterfowling are our traditions and the heritage of waterfowling and the connection to Nash Buckingham is obviously a very strong one and it's linkage to Ducks Unlimited. So to get a chance to see where he was actually filling out that journal and being in the same marsh that he was in is pretty special. Gadwall. It's a beauty. 
quintessential beaver dam duck. Uh -huh. It was a real thrill for me as a waterfowler to visit these, these storied waters. You could just imagine as the sun rose and painted the cypress trees with that golden glow, what Nash Buckingham must have seen when he was here. And to think that he hunted these waters nearly 100 years ago, probably very little has changed. Ducks Unlimited presented by Midway USA. Just about everything for hunting. Historically, flooded forests of the Delta provided reliable, high quality habitat for millions of mallards, wood ducks, and other waterfowl. DU and its partners have worked to conserve over 250,000 acres of waterfowl habitat throughout Mississippi. Day two was one of the more interesting hunts I've ever had in my life. Because of the weather, primarily, we knew there was a major front. I mean, a lot of rain and a lot of wind, potential of lightning, storms, we, we didn't know what. We even anticipated not going out. And we decided to go on out and, and we thought if we get out there and the weather gets too rough, we can get in the boat and we can come back. What's your experience hunting in a storm? I say on Beaver Dam, if it's cloudy, I'd just assume it'd be raining. Seems like the ducks work better. I think we're gonna be fine. Well, guys, let's load up. Heck, right. it's almost time to shoot. Okay. Well, I tell you, it's, it's pretty unnerving to be out in the middle of a cypress swamp with a thunderstorm approaching. As luck would have it, we, d we did manage to work a few groups in. <laughs> Ready, guys. Shoot him. Guys. A thing of beauty. <laughs> Drake. All right, that was a good job. I'm sure Nash Buckingham hunted in the same kind of weather conditions. Our clothes are different, but it's, it's a pilgrimage to a storied waterfowler's paradise. Not necessarily a purist adventure, but <laughs> if the shot was too easy, wasn't it? That's right. They saw that other duck stuck in there. It's kind of hard to describe how much it means to have Lamar back. He and I, more than father and son, are almost like best buddies. We laugh at each other calling in the blinds a lot of times because he grew up calling by my calling style. And a lot of times we'll call the same birds identically, and we get tickled because we'll both be doing the same call at the same time, and we just have to stop and start over. Hi, I'm Fred Zink with Zink Calls. Selecting the duck call that fits you has never been easier. With today's technology and the different materials that we're using today, acrylic and wood, selecting a call to fit your needs has never been easier. What I like to talk about is loud duck calls. If you're hunting windy days or, or, or just high pressure areas where there's a lot of people hunting and you have to get the duck's attention before everybody else, the old techniques was to blow a single reed a ring and style duck call and actually do a long series of hail calls. Today, uh, with technology and the machining techniques that are used today to make custom calls, we can also do that with a double read. Me personally, I don't like to sacrifice the realism of the duck call for volume. Today's age, we can create both of those things, realism and volume, in one duck call. This particular duck call is a power hen double magnum. It's very, very loud, but very, very realistic. When you have a call like that, it, it cuts through the wind, but still sounds very, very realistic. Other times when you're hunting public areas, you have to be on the lookout for ducks the whole time. And when you see the ducks, you wanna get their attention before everybody else. A lot of times, 
these, the first set of decoys that they clue in on, as long as you don't lose them, will be the ones they finish to. So remember, be realistic and be loud and you'll be more successful on windy days and in high pressure public areas. Another thing, please join and support Ducks Unlimited, the worldwide leader in wetland conservation and preservation. The guys are good callers. They're subtle callers. I was raised to blow a call loudly and with a lot of force and a lot of persuasion. And these guys are very soft callers and very persuasive in their own subtle kind of way. Shoot him. All right, boy. Good That's job. what I call yeah. that. Good job. Way to go. Great. Good shooting, guys. That is fine. How do we do? Now we're on the. We got three. Perfect. Here you go, out front. Coming out front. Straight out. Straight out. Somebody shoot him. I'm unloading. Shoot him. Very good. Excellent shot. The little 20 gauge speaks. What I frankly enjoyed the most about being in the blind with, with Mike, and, and it's really because of the linkage to my own boys, was that connection between father and son, which is a timeless one. And I could see how those two were interacting and working their duck calls together. Just perfect. Sit. Oh boy. Drop. Thank you, Drake. Wind is really picking up here. Yeah. All right, we got to make a decision. It's uh, it's right there at the river. Now. Let's go. Uh, you make the call. Well, I tell you, the air on the safe side. Let's go. And the air on the side of caution. We we decided to pack up and come out. So we got to cut and run. Moving fast. Moving fast. Absolutely. Okay. Boy, they working pretty, aren't they? Hey, shoot him, shoot him, shoot him, shoot him. Pain. Chris, dog stands. We all got to have them, whether homemade, whatever, we got to have them. But I got to have something versatile, because unlike you, I can't control my water to the millimeter. You know what I mean? Well, it's not about it's not about the water. It's really you got good trees or not. You know, sometimes you guys out there on the river, you don't know if you're going to be on willow trees or whatever. Right. You know, but when you do know that you're going to have a good tree, you know, kind of like this nice pine tree, like we always Georgia have. Pine. The, that's right. The way we always have in the flooded timber. Take this, real easy to use. Wrap it around the tree. Drop this chain straight down in there. Kind of pull it a little bit snug here. Yeah, because I mean, you know, I might eat, I might have sawgrass or whatever. So, right, you know, right. Well, that so. that part there, of course, of course, you know, there, there's there's different places to use each one of these. This is definitely what you want to use if you got decent trees, and this is definitely not. I mean, I know how y'all are. Y'all going where the ducks are? You moving around? Show you got to have something similar to this. Let me show, show you a really. Dog off right here. Here's what we're gonna do. Kill. Sit. Here's what we're gonna do. All we're gonna do. I got this leash on him. I'm gonna walk up here. I'm gonna, as I get close to it, I'm gonna start putting pressure on his neck until he gets up there and then make it very comfortable. Kennel, sit. Now, it's obvious he's been up there hundreds of times. This dog's hunted a lot off of these. He's very comfortable getting up here, but the same applies with him. When any time a dog gets up here, pet and love on him, let him know this is a good place for him. During the hunt, he's gonna be very comfortable. He's gonna be out of the water, out of the elements. He's gonna be able to see the entire hunt going on. After you do this several times, your dog will, will get really well at jumping up on there. Kennel. Good, sit. And as he is, as you get more comfortable with it after several repetitions, start throwing him some short retrieves. Sit, getting him used to this. Ready. Now believe me, do this during the off season. You don't want to wait till opening day like so many people do to get them accustomed to this equipment. Work on this during the off season, get that dog comfortable so it'll pay off for you on that first hunt. On morning two, the gadwalls had just started to work before strong storms forced an early departure from the blind. But a break in the weather lured us back out for more hunting on these historic waters. Now all hands are eager to get back in position where the late Nash Buckingham's echo can still be heard. The rumbling stopped, the lightning went away. Hey, let's go back to the blind. 
so we jump in, we go back, and actually the ducks work surprisingly well. Can't see him. Yeah. Shoot him. <laughs> Good shooting. <laughs> Finally. All right. Kind of liking this. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. In spite of the rain and the thunder and the <laughs> atmosphere. <laughs> we had a number of birds that came right in the hole, right over the decoys. The shooting was not very hard. They were flying. We were shooting. We were having a great time. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Boy, they're working pretty, aren't they? It's terrific to watch that dog. Those of us who are, are dog lovers, and I can't find a waterfowler who is not, I've had a chance to hunt with Drake since his early years as a duck hunting dog. is very emotionally engaging, and to, to see his strength and the pride in what he does, it's a real tribute to both his bloodlines, but also to the great training he's had over the years. <laughs> Double gun shoot straight. We've got a new duck caller in the blind. There you go, Wade. Nice job. I love to right. blow a call and watch ducks react to it. For, for me, personally, that's one of the greatest pleasures. They let me call a little bit, and uh, I don't know if I helped them any or not, but we were able on that second day to have a, a pretty good shoot. We went in with a nice bag. He's drinking that holy water. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Maybe we ought to all be drinking a little of it. Boy, he sneaked in, didn't he? Shoot him! Ducks Unlimited, presented by Midway USA. Just about everything for hunting. Mississippi is part of the Mississippi Flyway and provides important wintering habitat for waterfowl that are produced in the prairie pothole region and the Great Lakes. In most years, Mississippi winters significant numbers of mallards, wood ducks, and other waterfowl species across the state. Beaver Dam really is, for the duck hunter, a real mecca. I've had a chance to be in great clubs across North America, some old ones, some new ones, but getting a chance to visit here is a pretty remarkable opportunity. Day three, guys. All right. I hope it's not gonna be as drippy as day two was, but who's to complain? The front had blown through. It <laughs> rained all night long, I think up to like three o'clock in the morning. I'm thinking maybe if we get a break, we're gonna have some new birds on the lake today, and until they orient themselves, get used to hunting pressure, usually work better. All duck hunters know that. They wait for those days when there's a flight on and when new birds show up. Shoot him, boy. Right in front, right in front. I never saw him from the Boy, he sneaked in, didn't he? The ducks, for whatever reason, were skittish again today, like they were the first day. They just didn't show us much interest. was the endearing factor. Why are so many people so interested in bucking him? Every day I'm fascinated and amazed at how many people are bucking him followers. And, and, it's, and it's not just a certain age group. It, it goes much further than that. I mean, they're young guys. I've got guys 30 years old that have read everything Buckingham's ever written. And looking for more, they want to come see Beaver Dam. They, Wapanaka, places that he wrote about. And it's fun to show it to them. 
I thought maybe you'd have a little bookshelf back here with stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Just shooting this gentleman, $29.95. That would be a good idea. We could at least have it for reference. The connection to Nash Buckingham, I think his way of evocatively describing uh, what transpires on the way to the duck blind, in the duck blind, then coming back and reminiscing with great friends is a, a real natural way for the duck hunter to relate to his work. Whether you were hunting here in the early 1900s or the early 2000s, there are timeless dimensions of waterfowling that occur all the time. Shoot him! All righty, all righty. The notion of legacy and transferring the energy and the passion and love we have to the next generation is really a, a fundamental element of what we experience as duck hunters. You've hunted here for how many thousands of days, but you still have that spark when those birds cup up and start coming in. You're right, you never get tired of it. And, and it's the beauty of it. You never get tired of being around beauty. No, exactly. And I've seen it and I've experienced it many days, but every time I have a group come, I want them to be able to enjoy the same things that I've seen. Well, we have certainly enjoyed it. Well, thank and you. I appreciate you having us in here. Well, it has been our privilege. Well, I hope you'll come back. Okay. Well, we're going to wrap it up. Time to go home. Good deal. If you want to feel that you're making a difference in conserving our wild spaces, Ducks Unlimited is, is a cause that's worth their time and effort. You will be very gratified and pleased that you've devoted the time to Ducks Unlimited the company and seeing a lot of birds and you mix all those elements in and then you crown it with Nash Buckingham, the legend and the aura of being on Beaver Dam and it was just for me it was one of those pinnacle hunts, it was spectacular. All duck hunters are by nature optimists and I think that the traditions that our predecessors provided to us I think are inspiration to ensure that we do even bigger and better things in the future.